Hi everyone, welcome. I'm preparing to feed a couple of my worm bins. As you can see, I've got some berries, strawberry tops, bits of mushroom, and maybe some other stuff in here. I removed these items from the freezer a short while ago, so hopefully I'll have no trouble chipping some bits off this block of frozen food for these little guys. So these red wiggler bins, they've got some cotton in them. Some cotton fabric, basically towel, beach towel, that I placed in here at this point 101 days ago. Interesting how the worms managed to find themselves a nice little damp spot in between the plastic covering and the, um, the feeding zone indicator. This coffee filter basically serves as my marker to show me where I last fed. So even though there's worms hanging out on it, it does seem like the coffee filter has survived quite nicely since the last check-in 10 days ago. So I think we'll be able to revive it as feeding zone indicator once again when we finish here. Put it right back into service the way we did last time. Let's see if we have the same thing going on here. Quite a bit of dampness going on underneath the um, underneath the plastic coverings. I'm not sure why that is. I don't recall these systems being excessively damp. But I could just be spacing out here a little bit. So now what we did last time what was, was we just sprinkled a whole bunch of really dry leafy material out on the top. I didn't know if it was going to pick up this much moisture, but it sure did. It did a nice job. And even the foods that we added last time were not very moisture-laden. They were... Uh, there were things like coffee and some of my worm chow. And besides leaves like this placed out as a top covering, we also use that as a supplement to their feeding as bedding too. I'm kind of wondering if the reason I went with all that dry stuff that would not bring with it any moisture was possibly because we were observing perhaps a little bit excess moisture in here. A lot of times what I'll do to try to address what seems to be excess moisture is either put in dry materials in the hopes that it starts to soak up some of that excess moisture or perhaps I'll just not replace the plastic coverings and just let the system air out a little bit and ventilate allow some of the moisture in the system to be released through evaporation so I'm just pulling back all the material that we sprinkled out here on the top surface just so we can see how the stuff right below it looks. I was even wondering if we might want to try to recycle this stuff too, sort of the way we're recycling the feeding zone indicator coffee filters, put them right back into service the way they were as feeding zone indicators. Perhaps we can use all this leafy material as top covering once again when we finish. It's in good shape and there's a whole bunch of it so I kind of like the way it looks too. You know, you open the worm bin, there's all kinds of nice natural materials in there. So I think we'll do just that. So now we're getting down into the feeding zone. Yeah, where some of the leaves that were, were placed in here are also visible. I'm just trying to see if I can identify the cotton fabric materials. After 101 days, they are definitely making some good progress. I think the main reason the, these pieces are holding up anymore is just because of the fact they were kind of folded over and stitched. So it's the edge of the towel basically. Everything else that was just a single layer of material does seem like it was pretty much gobbled up. And I'm sure they'll do away with that stuff there too in time. But since it's folded over and stitched and everything it's a little bit more dense and possibly harder for the worms to break down. Here we've got ourselves a mango seed that the worms are hanging out inside of, enjoying it. I'm curious to see if there's any other leftover food items we'll bump into. Well, this is a leftover paper towel holding up quite well. Hardly showing any signs of wear at all. I mean, there's a little tear in there, but seems unlikely that 
that's signs of worm traffic. Perhaps those little holes right there where it's a little bit more damp are actually signs of worms nibbling through the stuff. So that was kind of interesting to find such a large piece of paper in there holding together so good. I would have um, I would have thought that it might have made some more progress. There's even more whole chunks of paper down here, more paper towel holding up quite nicely. I guess since the foods that we dropped in here were not bringing with them any moisture, they, um, these bedding materials perhaps were a little bit too dry for the worms to make much use of, so maybe that's why they didn't really get broken down too much. And some of the leaves we placed down in there too are still a little bit dry. So hopefully the assortment of frozen fruits and veggies, although I'm not sure if the mushroom even counts as either fruit or veggie, since it's technically just a fungi, right? Oh, here's more of the fabric. I keep waiting for that day when we go looking for the fabric and we just find none. <laughs> so we managed to open up a little bit of a hole here, down in the middle where we, we can drop in today's feeding. Let's, um, let's excavate over in this feeding zone too. Since when I'm running two bins side by side this way, I try to, uh, I try to treat them as if I'm working on one single larger bin versus two individual bins. I try, but it just doesn't feel natural. It just doesn't come naturally to do it that way for some reason. I guess I'm so, I don't know, kind of stuck on the fact that these are separate systems and to try to convince myself that it's one large system um, I just don't have a lot of luck usually tricking my mind into believing such a thing so I do need to consciously do that you know try to do things consistently across both bins so as to make it seem as if I'm just working on one larger system you know since these systems were buddied up We've been managing them very similarly, so we're going to find very similar materials in both systems. So here again, we're finding another mango seed that the worms are enjoying. We've already um, encountered, I believe, a little bit of the fabric material, didn't we? Would I have actually picked it up and set it aside without commenting on it? Seems unlikely, but okay. There's a little piece of it. Certainly not much. And then, like we saw in the other bin too, the, um, the dry leaves placed down into the feeding area are also still kind of holding out a little bit. Uh -huh, this is what I was smelling. I could smell a little bit of citrus. I couldn't tell what it is. I believe that's just part of a lime that's been in there for some time now. Lime, lemon, things like that seem to go pretty slowly in my systems for the most part. A lot of stuff I usually freeze before I give to the worms, as I've done here with today's feeding. But um, I believe in the case of those lemons and limes, or at least this piece of lime here, it would not have been frozen. All right, well, here we've got what I believe to be a cork. Is this the cork? It seems to look that way. It's so coated in castings and stuff that it's hard to tell. But I do have a cork that's been floating around in my systems for some time now. And I believe that that's what we just encountered there. It's just a very, very slow going object that's been moving in and out of systems, basically outliving every system it gets placed into. And then just getting moved into a new system over time. But I believe that over time it must eventually deteriorate and get broken down. I'm almost confident in it. I'm somewhat confident in it. <laughs> Not 100% confident though. So now I'm just starting to gradually return some of the objects we extracted from the feeding zone back down in to be right beneath everything that we're going to be putting in fresh. So here too, let's bring back these large chunks of paper we encountered along the way, the cork, the lime, the mango seed, 
and of course last but not least the fabric the cotton towel it's terry cloth cotton and I think we can move on to giving them their feeding now so I've got a few of these um oh, even some more paper towel let's drop that in here as well <laughs> maybe someday it'll get eaten so now I've got four of these coffee filters here these are the newer types of coffee filters that I've been buying lately because this technically is what my coffee filter requires I've just been for the longest time using the other type of coffee filters the ones that are not conical in shape like this they're not cone shaped but just the round cup shapes because I had a bunch of those filters laying around and it seemed like hey I could fit I was able to figure out a way to get them into the um, into the coffee maker even though it wasn't really designed to take that kind of filter and I figured I'd just use them you know since I had them instead of going out and buying more of these types I would just use what I had already and they worked okay, but now that I've run out of those, I'm going back to the type that the machine actually is supposed to use. So I'm not sure how much moisture these things are going to bring with them. I mean, mushrooms don't strike me as a very juicy um, material, so I don't really see it as something that's going to contribute a lot of moisture to the systems. The berries, on the other hand, I think probably will to a certain degree hopefully and hopefully by dampening what's down here in the feeding area it'll promote its breakdown all those pieces of paper we just drop back down in there and then what I'm sprinkling in on top of the foods is just more food basically it's coffee though a whole bunch of nice bite-sized food for them and something I often do when I'm feeding coffee is that I try to dress it up a little bit with my worm chow hopefully making it a little bit more interesting for the worms to come over and nibble on so that's pretty much what we're feeding the worms today let's let's cover up the feeding area and at the same time use that as an excuse to till up the outer edge of the bin over here and see how things look I think one of the observations we made in this system in both of these systems was that it did seem like we were starting to see some springtail action in here. I do have one system in which I feel like I've got just sort of a, an outbreak of springtail, so I'm just a little bit concerned that that might occur in more of my systems. So I'd really um, hate to see that happen. But I think one way to prevent that um, from happening is just to not let things get overly damp. And so perhaps it is beneficial in this case to have fed in a way that's not going to bring in tons of juices and moisture. It's a relatively dry feeding with all that coffee and all those dry coffee filters and mushroom. Perhaps the berries will bring in a little bit of dampness but probably not a whole lot. What I just excavated over here on this edge did seem to me like it was fairly fairly damp much more damp than anything I'd seen so far and well I guess that's probably the reason it was so loaded with worms because <laughs> they really like the dampness so I would like to um, inspect over here too so I think to permit that I'm just going to move all this collected leafy material that was draped out over the top over there just so we can excavate and till up and Verify that everything's looking good over on this edge too. In both of the bins, perhaps even aerate it a little bit if it is a bit too damp and bring some of the more moist materials out to the surface and submerge some of the drier materials down into the hole. I guess at the same time also blending in some of this somewhat dry leafy material which will hopefully also help stabilize the moisture level in here. These systems really aren't that old when you consider that a lot of my systems have definitely already exceeded 300 days of age. So I think these systems are, I don't know, this one is older by about a month and a half I think. And I think that it's about a half a year old at this point. So um, 
I'm sure there's still quite a ways to go in these systems before I would feel it was necessary to harvest the castings and move the worms onto greener pastures. So yeah, definitely a lot more moisture going on over in the older bin, it seems. But I don't think it's necessary to do anything to try to counteract it. Even though it's a little bit damp, I think by just continuing on with what we've got over here, which is some residual dry leafy material from the last feeding that we draped out across the top. I think if we just return it as sort of a top covering throughout the entire bin, it will continue to do what it's been doing over the past 10 days since the last check-in, which is absorb moisture into itself. Because I'll go ahead and I'll be returning those um, those plastic top coverings which will force the recirculation of moisture and perhaps by the next check-in we won't see quite as much moisture going on in here. I'm even wondering if perhaps what we could do over here in the system that does seem a little bit more damp, maybe we can put the plastic coverings on in such a way that they allow for just a little bit more airflow maybe allowing for some of the moisture in the system to escape around the edges. But on the other system, the younger one over here, I think, I think things are really in great shape, so I wouldn't want to change anything as far as the moisture level goes. I think over there, we could um, put the plastic right back on, just as thorough as it was when we first came in, so that it doesn't go ahead and lose any of its moisture here. If we lose a little bit of the moisture that's in this system out around the edges, I think that would actually be beneficial in the long run for us and get us a little bit closer to keeping these two systems in sync with each other as far as what the environment is like for the little wormies inside. So that's where we stand now with these two red wiggler bins, cotton fabric, 101 days in process and still not broken down but getting close. So um, we'll see how it comes along next time. See if the cotton makes any more progress between now and then. Probably will, but probably still be here as leftovers. So I've got a few things I've got to take care of getting cleaned up and put away. But I'm not going to keep you around for that because that's boring. Before I go there really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.